Good morning. Uh, our lesson today is, uh, is about uh, praying through times of distress and temptation. Uh, it's a passage from, from the 22nd chapter of Luke. Well, recently, there's been a major concern in our country with TikTok because there's a fear that China is using it as a way to erode the national security of our country. Propaganda or undermining trust have become problematic as rumors may create distrust. Well, within the last few weeks, school boards or school administrators, even uh, around this area, have had individuals within their districts attack them for allowing students to attend school as cat people. And the schools, they say, are providing them with litter boxes in the school's bathrooms. Well, these complainers could verify their concerns because they had received evidence over the internet that these behaviors were taking place. But research into the so-called behaviors could not verify that any such incident had taken place and no school had even had a litter box request. You know, living in an age when we depend on the internet to make purchases, book a trip, reserve a room, or look for quick fixes for, prepare, for repairing a lawnmower, or even to find ideal planning times for gardens, we may often get more information than we need. And it doesn't stop because soon, there will be a steady stream of unsolicited emails from these sites or from similar sites who want to save us time and money. And when we try to delete or unsubscribe, we get similar emails from the same or similar companies with a slight variation from the original email logo, each trying to tempt us with better bargains or a higher quality of service. You know, Jesus' disciples did not have the internet, but they were not immune to temptation. We may recall that at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he retreated to the desert for a time of fasting in preparation to begin his, his life and sharing his good news with the world. There he was confronted by Satan, who attempted to have Jesus employ his power and seek wealth and fame by foregoing a life of service and sacrifice to accept the riches and earthly desires that could be his. He would be true, though, to the mission that God, his Father, had sent him to do, and he would not be enticed to deviate from that mission. He would not be tempted, but now the time had come and was nearing a point where he would have to allow himself to be sacrificed. He knew that his disciples would soon be challenged and they would be tempted to allow worldly concerns to outweigh their faith. So at this moment, as the cloud of his impending death was gathering around him, he needed a time of prayer, a time for him to talk to God and to accept his ultimate fate. But he was also concerned about his disciples and encouraged them to make this a time for their personal prayers as well. I'm going to read our scripture passage now from Luke 22, verses 39 through 46. Jesus left and made his way to the Mount of Olives, as was his custom, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived, he said to them, pray that you won't give in to temptation. He then withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. He said, Father, if it's your will, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not my will, but your will must be done. Then a heavenly angel appeared to him and strengthened him. 
He was in anguish and prayed even more earnestly. His sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he got up from praying, he went to the disciples. He found them asleep, overcome by grief. He said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray so you won't give in to temptation. There was a, a man who had a reputation from, for taking companies from being mediocre to a point of excellence. And he had been on the job for about a month when he called on the heads of the various departments to come to him for individual conferences. As he met with each one of them, he began with one question. What is the name of the lady who cleans your office each day? Most of the men he had called in did not know and thought their new boss surely had more relevant questions that should have been a priority for allowing them to showcase their achievements. But he quickly made clear why he had asked this question. He explained, your success and the success of this company depends on the people who work for you. Value them for their service and faithfulness. I think the results will be remarkable. You know, Jesus knew that his disciples would face a tremendous test when he was being subjected to arrest, to a humiliating and degrading trial and to a death by crucifixion. The temptation to distance themselves from him and to erode the ministry in which they had participated would be before them. Could they be counted on to remain faithful? One had already turned away from him, lured by money, or perhaps because Jesus was not the militaristic Messiah that he had envisioned. To Judas, teaching peace, reaching out to unworthy people with love and compassion, and not taking a course of rebellion did not seem the way to establish a kingdom. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke all record the account of Jesus praying after he and his disciples have left the Passover meal and made their way to the Mount of Olives. Matthew's account is a bit more specific in relating that they were at a place called Gethsemane, a name that means oil press, in an olive grove located on the western slope of the Mount of Olives. This apparently was a place of retreat where Jesus often visited when he was in the area of Bethany the hometown of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Probably this is why Judas knew where he would be as he led the guards to this site. Matthew's account differs slightly from that of Luke in that when Jesus left the group for a time of solitary prayer, he took Peter, James, and John with him, asking them to stay awake while he prayed a bit further away. Perhaps this would enable him to know of the approach of those who would be coming to arrest him. But Luke does not mention any separation of the three men from the other disciples. And Jesus asks the entire group to be in prayer as he moves further for his private prayer. In this private place, Jesus refers to the suffering that lies ahead as a cup a metaphor that you could find perhaps in Isaiah 51, 17, or it even could be a, a reference from Jeremiah as the cup of God's wrath from which Jesus would, would drink to spare the world from their sins of disobedience. Jesus asked that the cup be taken from him, but he adds that he would be willing to do as God directs him. Luke portrays the agony of Jesus and shows that even as he prayed, he was in anguish and that his sweat fell like drops of blood. While Matthew doesn't share information about the disciples' emotions, Luke attributes their falling asleep to their being overcome by grief. Jesus asked them to pray that they won't give in to temptation. 
In some translation, the verse reads that you may not come into the time of trial, perhaps meaning that they pray to be spared from the suffering that Jesus would undergo. I tend to think that he was trying to urge them to pray not to succumb to evil during the trials ahead. In Matthew, when Jesus concludes his prayer, he awakens his disciples with the news that the betrayer is approaching. But in Luke, Jesus finds them asleep from grief, and he awoke them, asking again that they pray against the temptation that would be forthcoming. Later, after, after the disciples had fled and Jesus was being tried, Surely, he was tempted to defend himself from the mockery, the beatings, even the rejection from people who had recently praised him. People who had placed palm branches before him as he entered Jerusalem. Even after he was nailed to the cross, he was not spared from temptation. As one of the criminals who was being crucified beside him tauntingly said, Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But perhaps we can better see how the other criminal responded by admitting that as lawless men, he and the jeering man deserved punishment, but that Jesus had done nothing wrong. Then he turned toward Jesus and asked him to remember him when he returned to his kingdom. Jesus then assured him, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Even in the most desperate circumstance, the criminal had not succumbed to the temptation of ridiculing Jesus. He accepted the pain he was receiving, but he recognized Jesus and turned to him even as he was dying. Our Christian experience does not free us from pain nor does it prevent us from being tempted. But it does give us the opportunity to trust Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us as we continue life's journey, even if that journey becomes rough or fills our minds with fear. We must continue to pray for deliverance and turn away from temptation. Let's pray together. Dear God, we know that we will face temptation and we pray that you will provide us strength and give us the power of your love as we move forward in this life. Amen.